In this video, we'll discuss the alkylation of amines. So we can make derivatives of amines, starting with even just ammonia, by alkylating them. The ammonia will act like a nucleophile, and then we'll just need some alkyl group that has a leaving group on it. So as an example, we could start with ammonia and put that in solution with, we'll use ethyl bromide. So my nitrogen is going to act as a nucleophile. It's going to come in, kick this guy off. and give me this. So I have a positive charge here. And in this case, ammonia is a very good base. Nitrogen is a good base. Um, when it's neutral, even, it's a pretty good base. And bromine with a negative charge is a very poor base because it's the conjugate base of a strong acid. So it will be the ammonia that comes in and deprotonates to give the neutral compound, which I'll draw on the next slide. So now I have this guy, which is a primary amine because it has one carbon attached to it. Now I can keep going through this process where I add a second equivalent here. So this can come in, kick that guy off. I end up with a positively charged species and then ammonia or whatever nitrogen compound that's neutral that runs into it first can come in. and deprotonate. Now I have a secondary amine. If I add another equivalent, I can go to a tertiary system, and I'm going to put two arrows there, so the second arrow will be minus H plus. I'm just going to draw the product. So now I have a tertiary amine. So you can have primary, secondary, or tertiary. You can even make quaternary amines, where you add a fourth alkyl group, and the nitrogen is just going to be stuck with a positive charge in that case. So it has a heteroatom um, that balances that out, and it's just used as a salt. So we'll look at that next. So if we start with our tertiary amine, and we have yet another equivalent of ethyl bromide in solution, I end up getting this guy, and this is a quaternary ammonium salt. So the ammonium tells me that I've got a positively charged species, and there's nothing to deprotonate. Those are all alkyl groups, and so it's kind of stuck with that charge. So these types of species are sometimes used as detergents ammonium salts like this. They have um, a nonpolar aspect to them because they have this alkyl group. So species that are nonpolar, like oils, if you've got a stain in a shirt or something, for example, um, the nonpolar aspect of that would be able to dissolve that oil out. But then you also have polarity because you have a charge associated with it. So that allows it to be dissolved in the water. So, you know, we put our stuff in the washing machine and we have water and the detergent in it. The detergent is able to kind of go back and forth between the aqueous and the um, non-aqueous components, and that's how we can remove things like that. A more laboratory-based application of this is called a phase transfer catalyst. And it uses the same principle. So a really common phase transfer catalyst, this guy's big, <laughs> is tetrabutyl ammonium bromide. So we have four butyl groups, so tetrabutyl and then ammonium, because I've got a positively charged nitrogen, and this bromide. So this has the same aspect. We've got these chains here that are nonpolar, and then we've got this charged part that is polar. So tetrabutyl ammonium bromide is what you will sometimes see it referred to as, it's a horrible B, um, is able to transport molecules back and forth between aqueous and non-aqueous phases. So if you have reactants in two different phases, they're able to get together because this species will transfer them back and forth. So I'll draw a, a bad picture for you on the next page. 
So say we have a reaction flask and I've got two phases in here and now it depends on which uh, what my organic layer is whether it's on the top or the bottom but often our organic layer is on the top right so I have two different phases and if I have some reactant that is in the aqueous layer and then I have something that's in the organic layer I can use this phase transfer catalyst to transfer back and forth between these two phases. So we can swap out the ion. So I'm going to draw like this so we can sort of see. So here's our tetrabutylammonium bromide and it can swap out the bromide for the OH minus and it can bring this to the organic layer where it can then react with whatever is in solution that it wants to um, or that it's going to replace. So when you have reactants that are in different phases, a phase transfer catalyst can allow those reactants to meet by carrying them back and forth to the different phases.